Human evolutionary research has had a complicated history, especially when naming fossils. Fossils are found, names are applied. Sometimes these names go redundant. Sometimes redundant names become resurrected. Found in 1907 near the town of Heidelberg in Germany, the Mauer mandible was considered different enough from Homo sapiens that it got a new species name, Homo heidelbergensis. Over the decades that followed, Homo heidelbergensis fell out of use. The fossils that lay between Homo erectus and Homo sapiens were just referred to as archaic Homo sapiens, and the Mauer mandible fell into this category. The use of Homo neanderthalensis spent some time in the wilderness also. As more fossils were uncovered, Homo heidelbergensis and Homo neanderthalensis became popular, and this was down to the ever-increasing array of shapes the fossil skulls took. The archaic Homo sapiens, lasting many hundreds of thousands of years, had skull had a skull variation so diverse. Paleoanthropologists realized the necessity for species names to ease communication problems and to help make sense of human evolution. Homo heidelbergensis lived 700,000 years ago to 100,000 years ago and had a huge geographic range from the continents of Africa to Europe to the Indian subcontinent. The most iconic representative of Homo heidelbergensis is Cowboy 1. And here it is. Take note of the huge brow ridges and also the large size of the skull that would have held the large brain compared to the other hominins. The Tiganif Sandpit of Mascara, Algeria contained deposits dating to around 700,000 years ago, within which were two adult mandibles and a number of teeth found in the 1950s. All in all, they represented one child and four adults. Assigned to Atlanthropus, Mauritanicus. Later they were reassigned to Homo erectus after comparison to Homo erectus fossils found at Jiaokodian in China. Since 2009 the Tiganif fossils have featured prominently in the Homo heidelbergensis debate. Some paleoanthropologists argue that the tooth size and shape similarities allow them to be attributed to Homo heidelbergensis further arguing that they have more in common with Homo sapiens than with Homo neanderthalensis. The latest study into the internal structure of the Tiganif molars provides added evidence of this trend. The pulp cavity is large but splits in two high up in the tooth, similar to Homo sapiens. While the pulp cavity in Homo neanderthalensis does not split, but instead acts like an inverted pyramid. Other results are not so clear cut, however. The Tiganif molars have a high crown dentine percent value and intermediate to relatively thick enamel. Characteristics which you would associate with Homo neanderthalensis. Yet when we examine the pulp chamber conformation and its relative position to the enamel dentine junction, the Tiganif teeth associate better with Homo sapiens. It seems appropriate then to assign these fossils to Homo heidelbergensis, and yet they show characteristics of Homo neanderthalensis, Denisovans and Homo sapiens. It seems like the muddle in the middle is not such a muddle after all.